well, this certainly is quite the sight. Me being live, but also while I silence my phone. This certainly is a sight. Not only to see me again, which I know you're all excited to see, but the fact that a trade happened. Now, is this trade worth me coming on and doing the show? You bet your sweet hot tamale peppers it is. Because what this trade is, it is quite the trade, if I do say so myself. It is a trade that is confusing, but understandable in a sense, only if certain things happen. The only way this trade makes sense, and I'm sure all of you are wondering, is this a good trade? This is only going to be a good trade if the following events happen. Now, for those of you who don't know, a trade did happen today at about 4 o'clock or so, maybe a little later, maybe around 5 o'clock, if we're honest. The New York Islanders have traded, you know, let me reverse that. The New York Islanders have acquired a 2021 second round pick and a 2022 second round pick for, it's not Boychuk, it's not Letty, and it's not Ladd, although we do want him gone. Who the Islanders trade away? Well, it wasn't a guy who was a unrestricted free agent. It's not like they traded his rights or anything, even though it's a little too late for that. They traded Devon Tades. For those of you who are on the Devon Tades train, this is a stunner for you. Despite the fact that Devon Tades had an absolutely miserable Miserable, miserable postseason. Barry Trotz must have felt that Devon Taves simply wasn't good enough. And the only way that this trade works is that if Johnny Boychuk is dealt away too. Now, what is Johnny Boychuk going to be worth? Well, he's probably going to be worth a couple of picks. But who knows? He has $6 million in cap space. That's what you owe him. For, I believe, another year or two. And the point being is, the Islanders are strapped for cash, so to speak. All the Devon Taves trade does is it gives them a little wiggle room. Not as much pressure, but it gives the Islanders something to give to another team that wants something in return for Boychuk. Now, they're not going to just take Boychuk and say, oh, yeah, sure, we'll just take him along with everything else. No, they're going to want something in return. And I doubt it's a first-round pick, and I'll be very shocked if it is. And if you're wondering, I've got my phone here just to keep up with anything that takes David Pagnota post something, or Bob McKenzie, or Darren Drager, or Pierre Lebrun, or whomever the hell it might be. But in this instance, it's not going to be easy to trade away Boychuk, and especially when Lula Marillo has stated that there is a strong chance that Andy Green will return, and that Corey Schneider will sign. I will get to Andy Green and Corey Schneider in a couple of minutes. But the issue that the Islanders face right now is who's going to be on defense. They're loaded on the right side. The left side is, well, meh. I talked to some people today, and one person I talked to, he's uh, very knowledgeable. He's actually a cap genius. We talked there a little bit earlier, and we said that, or he said, and I agreed with him, that if Boychuk is gone, these picks are most likely going with him. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that Andy Green will most likely be signed. Some a, a, has to be a small deal, probably maybe a one-year deal worth maybe one or 
two million, no, no more. Hard to imagine Andy Green makes more, especially the five million he got last last season. Highly doubt that. But I can tell you this. Apparently, Lou Lamarillo thinks that Noah Dobson is ready for the NHL level. Judging by the inconsistencies and the inconsistent play that he had this year, I beg to differ, but I'm not the GM. I will criticize, but I'm not a GM. Noah Dobson, in my opinion, and several others, looked absolutely miserable in Game 6. You could chalk that up to nerves, but it's the postseason. It's the Eastern Conference Final. It's Elimination Game 6. You better get your pants on, sir, because you'll be playing tonight. You put your big boy pants on, and you get your ass out there and skate. Now, in regards to the defensive formation, it'll most likely be Pelican Pollock, Letty, and Mayfield. And most likely, if we're assuming this correctly, Noah Dobson and Andy Green. So Andy Green will most likely be a mentor figure to Devontae's. But here is the caveat, people. Here is that little caveat, that little twist in the story. The NHL season is supposedly starting on January 1st. Now, that's only three months from now. Uh, well, it's October right now. I'm sorry, less than three months. It's about two months now, or maybe a little more. November, December, January. The issue is that from what is being reported, nothing is confirmed yet, but from what is going on and what's being reported, there will be between 60 and 70 games this year in this upcoming season because of the COVID and all that. We all know what's going on. That's basically going to be playing games virtually every other day. And with 60, 70 games, a guy like Andy Green, I don't think he's going to play all of those games. I highly doubt it. Guys like Letty, Mayfield, Pollock, Pellick, maybe Dobson, if Trotz thinks he's ready. But we don't know. David brings up a good point here. We just got a lot slower. We did. But who knows? The issue here is that if it is true and Green is signed, that most likely it'll either be Thomas Hickey or Sebastian Ajo, not the Carolina Hurricane Sebastian Ajo, the uh, excuse me, the New York Islanders Sebastian Ajo, same name, same last name, different regions, I believe. But I'm not. So fond in their geographical locations, nor do I really care. But most likely, it'll be the Hickey or Aho that'll be platooning with Andy Green. How well will that work? Well, who the hell knows? We don't know. It could work wonders. It could be a complete disaster. But I trust Trotz. Now, what does this do for the RFAs? Well, let's put it like this. If the Islanders ditch Johnny Boychuk, Let's say we ignore the RFAs for a moment. That gives the Islanders about, and I'm going to take a wild guess here, maybe $15 million in cap space. Well, that'll, that'll be pretty good. But I was talking to my friend earlier who happens to be a cap genius, as you know, you know who you are. And me and him discussed, and he thinks that uh, Pollock and Barzell will get around – Six million dollars each, totaling a total, totaling an amount of twelve million dollars. Now, that leaves the Islanders with about three million dollars left. Sign Andy Green for one or two million, and most likely, you either bring back Derek Brassard or Matt Martin. So, in essence, you're basically getting the same team back with the subtraction of Devontae's and Thomas Grice, who you don't need to remind me is now signed with the Detroit Red Wings for two seasons for $3.6 million per. And that news was already hard to deal with. And I knew, I knew going in that Thomas Grice was out the door. I, I knew it. It was just one of those things where you wish you, it doesn't happen, but you know what's going to happen anyway. Like, 
guarantee he won't be wearing number one for Detroit, seeing that retired by Terry Sawchuck. But that's neither here nor there. Another rumor that's going around that Lou has not really debunked but confirmed is that there is a also a strong – oh, here we go. Here we go. It is just announced that the Islanders are finalizing a contract with Corey Schneider – and it will be for $700,000. That is from Pierre Lebrun. Corey Schneider is signing with the Islanders for $700,000. So what does this most likely mean? His ass will be in Bridgeport. I highly doubt he will be up in the NHL. The only way I can see it is if either A, Varlamov is hurt or Sorokin is hurt, or B, Sorokin blows so hard that they have no choice but to say, Get your ass down to Bridgeport, and Schneider will fill in as backup for you. Schneider confirmed. Just saying, I speak the facts, people. Okay, well, 5-4, Pulak, and 7 for Barzell. I'm not going to math, damn it. But, hey, if we can pick up a $4 million, who knows? Well... Those of you who are saying who cares about Schneider, it sure as hell beats the pants out of having Christopher Gibson, a guy who's a career AHL goaltender, someone who couldn't mentor a traffic cone, for God's sake. Schneider at least is able to mentor, I forget his first name, but Skerrick in the AHL. That amounts to something. Schneider has, you know, you know I'd say a Decent amount of NHL experience, some as a starter. Maybe that involved a trip to the Stanley Cup or two. Just saying. That's, in my opinion, I think that helps a young goaltender like Skarek a lot. Instead of having a career AHLer who doesn't know how to make a save, somehow goes to Tampa Bay. And for some of pe for some people believe that Tampa Bay has these such great scouts that – Christopher Gibson will amount to be, according to some, after next after this season, Andre Vasilevsky's backup. I'm sorry, I couldn't help but laugh when I heard that myself. So, in terms of youth, what youth? There really isn't much. We all know that Kiefer Bellows, you know, the promising prospect we all thought he was, is now suspended. How long? Well, who knows. But he has been suspended for X amount of games for violating the for having a PED violation. Well, maybe that explains why he couldn't skate well or shoot well or anything else. Maybe it explains why he didn't go with the Islanders into the Edmonton bubble, which we were, which some of us were pissed about. Terreri? I think it means a Foley. If you're thinking to Foley, it was a four-year deal. But give me a name and I'll confirm it, I guess. But... It explains a lot, and it kills, absolutely murders, the Islanders' hopes of trading Keeper Bellows. Because, pff, who knows, right? Oh, well, I guess we just have to wait and see at this point, which is something that, you know, us Islander fans with Lou Lamarillo are more than well aware of. Of how that is to go, where it's oh Chris Terreri. Uh, I'll look that up right now. Let's see here, Chris Terreri, Chris T E R R E R I, Chris Terreri. Okay, let's see here. I haven't seen anything on. Oh, not Chris. I said Chris Terreri, not Chris Terrero. I don't know why? Chris Terreri. I don't want to see. I haven't heard anything about Chris Terrieri, honestly. Oh, wait. Hmm. Is that possible? Hmm, maybe. But who knows? 
Loose cap management always concerned me. It concerns a lot of people. And I think that was a reference to an old uh, an old player, I'm not sure. But then again, I'm not a hockey historian, so. Oh, well. But here's where things get a little touchy. I'm aware now. I kind of figured that out. I'm aware he's messing with me. I kind of picked that up when I was like, oh, wait a minute. It took a bit, but it clicked. It took a bit, but it clicked. Damn it. Oh, well. Like I said, I'm no hockey historian. All right. I remember that. I wonder, would Tariri make a better head coach for Bridgeport than Brent Thompson? I think a punching bag would be a better head coach for the Bridgeport Sound Tigers. I think a blow-up doll is a better head coach than Brett Thompson. I'm thinking Moldy Cheese is a better goal, is a better head coach than Brent Thompson. Quick question for all those Brett Thompson lovers out there. And for all you Bridgeport Sound Tiger lovers, how many top six forwards has Brett Thompson developed in his tenure as AHL head coach? Out of curiosity, how many? I'd like to see if you know, because I've heard, oh, the players love Brett Thompson. Well, if they love him so much, how come they suck? How come? that most of the players that are under Brent Thompson, the forwards, are no more than third or fourth liners. How much? How many top six forwards has Thompson developed? And I'm not talking what they were what they were prospected to be. I'm talking about when they came up and are with the Islanders. How many did he develop? If anybody has the answer to that, I mean, I know the answer to it. I want to know if you know. I want to see if you can answer that question. There are no Thompson lovers in this group. Well, that's good, but I, 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 the question still stands. How many top six forwards has Brent Thompson developed? It's a simple question. It's either a one or a two, maybe a three or a four or a five. Come on, there's only one right answer. There's only one right answer. There's only one answer to really think of. I'm practically giving it to you. I can only tell you that there is maybe it's less than two, but more than zero. If you can't figure that out, it's not a half number either. Brian, you are wrong. David is correct. It is only one. And he's still with the Islanders to this day. Brock Nelson. But yet for some reason, Lou Lamarillo feels the need to keep him around. Very questionable if you ask me. Is he good at developing defensemen? Sure. I mean, Pulak is here. Pelic is here. Taves was here. Although he looked absolutely miserable in the playoffs this year, but that's neither here nor there. He gone. He gone. So, what happens now? What happens now, you might ask? Well, we wait. We wait to see if. The Islanders trade Johnny Boychuk. Does it happen tonight? Does it happen tomorrow? Does it happen on Sunday? Does it happen Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday? Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tonight. The night is still young, indeed, is what they always say. What I'm concerned about is, is Lou Lamarillo's son, Chris Lamarillo, begging his daddy dearest for... Please don't trade my drink. Please don't fire my drinking buddy, Brett Thompson. Please don't, Daddy. I really don't want him to go. He's my bestest friend. That's the question. 
if Thompson sticks around any longer, it'll continue to show that this organization still holds the Yacht Club mentality. Maybe not at the NHL level, but at the AHL level. It's not like Thompson's been here for several years and has basically produced the equivalent of a tumbleweed in terms of top six players. I'm hoping you're telling the truth, Hubert. That would be wonderful if the Islanders signed Hoffman. That would put an end to the woes. Maybe it'll cut down on what the the rumors are on the uh, um, not the rumors. Wow, on what the how do you call it? But the demands are for Barzell and Pollock. That would help a lot. It would help on the power play. It would help on the offense. Help on everything. Instead of, you know, struggling to score and, you know, playing patty cake with the damn puck on the power play, it would actually help the Islanders. But if it's true, I don't think it is. I haven't seen anything of the sort. But I will look it up just in case you're a damn liar. Let's look it up here because I like to be accurate. I don't like being fake news. Doesn't matter which side you're on. I just don't like fake news. Mike Hoffman. Mike Huffy. Top free agent still available. Let's see what the latest is on Mike Hoffman. Hmm. Haven't seen a thing. You are fake news, Mr. J. Rich. But if you aren't, and it is confirmed, I will not call you fake news anymore. 5.375 million. Interesting. But I don't see anything on Twitter. I don't. I simply don't. So I don't believe you. There is nothing. You are a liar. You are fake news. It's not good to be fake news. It never is to be fake news. Fake news is not good news. It is never good news. Fake news is fake news, meaning it is fake. It is artificial. It is terrible. And your source is TSN in Canada. Well, is it with the Isles or is it with another team? The Islanders better hope they could get rid of Boychuk because that would help a lot. Now, if the Islanders don't sign at Matt Martin, which I wouldn't mind at all, you could easily slot Leo Komarov and Ross Johnston in his place. It's not like Ross Johnston is a penalty-causing machine or anything. And it's not like Leo Komarov doesn't have an offensive skill in his body. So maybe I tend not to believe you, sir. But are you really? Is it TSN at that CA? where I will find this one piece of information that Mike Hoffman is a New York Islander. Because this video will be extended if that is the case. Because the title of this video clearly says Devon Taves trade and more. And that will be the and more part. So far, I do not see it. I do not see this deal. I see Tyler Toffoli's deal with the Montreal Canadiens. The last time this thing that came up was one Corey Schneider to the New York Islanders. One year, $700,000. Lucas Walmart, one year, $950,000. Brad Richardson, one year, $1 million. Eric Gustafson, defenseman, for the Philadelphia Flyers, $3 million. Joakim Ryan, Carolina Hurricanes, 700000 No mention. Why can't paying bills pay me back? I don't know why no bills can't pay me back. Because they're bills. They're Williams. And Williams are never good. But I don't see anything. You, sir, are fake news. Can anybody say it with me that this man right here who is spreading the information about the... Mike Hoffman to the Islanders is fake news. Until I see a legitimate source, and I've looked all over TSM, I'll say it's fake news. 
and I'm virtually done with Michael Del Cole. He's a fourth liner, a first round pick as a fourth liner. What a terrible outcome that is. What a terrible draft selection. Could you chalk it up to maybe the GM? Of course you can. But I think it more than should be known that it should be blamed on the BS head coach in Bridgeport. That is just disgusting. Well then, if you're not lying, how come there's no proof? Unless you're an inside source of your own. I want to see a blue check mark next to this tweet of this notification. That's what I want to see first. Before I go spreading fake news or real news. Who knows? I would rather have Leo Komarov on the fourth line. Michael Del Col could kick rocks for all I care. They're a first round pick. Number five overall, I believe. And you amount to nothing but a fourth liner? My God. I. There are some things you can't fathom. There are some guarantees that you just can't understand. Death is something you don't understand. Taxes, well, taxes are just taxes. You don't really want to understand them, but, you know, you got to pay them. And Michael Del Cole will be a fourth liner after he's a first-round pick, fifth overall or so. And yet he's still here. A first-round pick, number five overall, and he is a fourth liner. A 13th man, if you will. You would think that a first-round pick, number five overall, would get you at least, at least, top six. Second liner, maybe. First liner tops. Star player, maybe. Maybe third liner. Effect, effective third liner who can score. But at the very least, second liner. Top six. But no. We got stuck with the guy who had a thriving college. Supposedly, Mesper Mesper Bridgeport. Oh, but no, 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 no. He's he's driving. He's developing. It. He's doing the right thing. Thompson is doing the right thing with him. What was that right thing? Converting him into a fourth liner? The same thing with Bellows. Scores 20 goals. Can't figure it out here. You want to tell me it's a system? I blame it on the player. You want to tell me that he's doing great in Bridgeport? Well, how come he can't translate it to the NHL level? Why is the wait? That's a one year, one way contract. That ain't good. No, sir, Bob. But it's blue. What do you expect? What do you expect? Do you expect much now? For the final round, this will be a question and answers. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. We'll be here due to his cheap salary and was a fifth pick in the draft. That was supposed to be a strong top five draft. We all know that's not true. Stro, you're damn right about that. That Dal Cole is anything but strong. Look what that was going to be. Yager is not. Oh, really? Well, Lou does like his old vets, so yes. Any questions, comments, concerns, anything at all? When will the next live video be? I don't know when, honestly. Maybe when something happens. I couldn't tell you, honestly. I really couldn't. It's honestly to the point where it's all spontaneous. Any other questions, comments, concerns, or anything else of the kind before I call it a night? Anything at all? Anything? Come on, list your questions, comments, and confirm this. 
<sighs> if not, you all have three, two, one. And time's up. So with that being said, I have no idea when the next live show is going to be. But I will see you when that live show happens again. As for always, thank you very much, everybody, for watching this Resorto Report. I am your most gracious host. I've been blessed with my presence, Greg Resorto, and I will see you on the next live show. <laughs>